go. Because that's fabulous. Um, because this is so much about energy, energy and positivity. This form of prayer that we're going to use today is called the 12 blessings, um, which, as you also probably know, our belief in the Ethereum Society is that they were given by Jesus, the very same Jesus who walked this earth 2,000 years ago. I have never left you. That very same Jesus, through the founder of the Ethereum Society, uh, Dr. George King, a master of yoga, uh, as you probably know, who on 12 consecutive Sundays in 1958 went into what we call a positive yogic somatic trance and was used by Jesus to bring these blessings through. Prayer, which as we'll see is an appeal. We're going to make this great appeal to this divine source. And by having a mystical experience, it allows us to see our regular, ordinary, everyday experiences in a slightly different way. And the more mystical experiences that we have, uh, the more they tip the balance. And our regular, everyday experiences um, become less and less regular, everyday, routine experiences. And we begin actually to see life in a much more mystical way, profound, beautiful experience that we have been given by, literally, by God knows who. Um, next question then, what do we mean by prayer? Prayer, in, in very simple terms, is taking energy from one point and, take, and, and giving it to another point. That's what we're doing with prayer certainly requires uh, a belief in some form of higher power. Some people perhaps don't have that belief, and then they will have an experience which will make them discover and realize and know that that higher power is there, that that higher power exists. But for us, in terms of practicing prayer, yes, we have to have that fundamental belief until we know it's a reality, um, that there is this higher power. And we're going to that higher power to make a request, uh, and a, a request of energy, if you like. Uh, and, and then we're going to give that energy to someone or something or a situation that we believe needs that energy, that power. You really, absolutely, fundamentally believe this. You're desperate. You are desperate. Um, desperation, is, in that sense, is, is a great aspect of dynamic prayer. You are, you, because we're going to go to this very real divine source, and we are going to make a desperate plea and a, a truly heartfelt appeal for that energy. Not for ourselves, but because we deeply and passionately care about this person or this situation. And when we do that, and it's been sh shown, not just in the Ethereum Society, although we have shown it, that you literally, miracles can be done through the power of prayer. Most people can agree that Mahatma Gandhi was a truly remarkable, great individual, a wonderful human being. He said, prayer, and this is crucial, properly understood, properly understood and applied is the most potent instrument of action. Of all the things that he did, the wonderful things, the nonviolent methods that he used, and prayer is nonviolent, and it is a weapon, in point of fact. Masters described it as a weapon. We in the Ethereum Society have literally seen miracles, not just us in the Ethereum Society, remarkable things, including, we claim, ending of war, literally through the power of prayer. Uh, and actually, Dr. King, on that note, has said that the Vietnam War, was not ended by any politicians in their peace talks, but prayer 
behind the scenes. And prayer is very, it, it takes place behind the scenes. It's not, um, it's not, some people do do it in public, it tends to be much, it's, but it's not anything, obviously it's not anything to, to do to show off. Not showing off with prayer. We don't make claims. And in fact, when we've done our prayers, the thing that we do is we detach. We let it go. We trust, we have faith that that energy that we have called upon, that we've invoked, and that we've directed, will do its work. And we believe that without doubt or troubling it, we let it go. You have to have feeling. It can't just be a mental exercise. It has to, um, to the point where in a private situation, one does weep. And, um, uh, you know, again, Dr. King has, you know, has, has spoken himself about weeping. And in that mystical experience, you may find that you are utterly uncontrollably weep, weeping, but you, because you've had that incredibly mystical experience through this prayer. And, you know, most, is, most especially through this practice of the 12 blessings, because it goes, it goes higher and higher and higher and higher, or you could say it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Visualization is a very necessary aspect of dynamic prayer. You, um, in, in both ways, your, your visualization of who to whom you are making this appeal. We need to open ourselves up to this, oh, wondrous, mighty spirit, whatever it is. We have to form in our mind a visualization of that. And when we use verbs in the prayers like flow, we need to visualize that flow. We're praying for this energy to flow. So we want a visualization of that flow. And we also need a visualization of the entity or whoever it is to whom we are um, directing that energy. So that's what comes with this focus. You start to bring it all into much clearer alignment. You're fixed, you've got control over what you're doing. And um, so that is the sort of focused aspect of this visualization. And then another aspect, a mental intensity. You really absolutely 100% believe this. You've got this very fixed mental intensity. And the fourth thing which Anita brought up is, is love or feeling. So when we bring visualization and focus and mental intensity with feeling, combining all of these things together, we have most, if not all, and probably all, um, because everything else would be related to that, the ingredients for dynamic, really dynamic prayer. I think that um, most of you know, um, through the Aetherius study, just to finish this off, that we pray like that. We have chakras or psychic centers in the palms of our hands and of course we have the major chakras up and down the spine, the seven major centers, but the main one we're going to use in prayer because we have this care, we have this feeling, uh, is our heart center. And so that allows the heart center to be open. You're not covering it up. The form is an aspect of it, but it's not the most important aspect. It's having that mental connection, believing it, putting that mental energy into it. You can do miracles with, with the power of the mind, and um, certainly through using the power of the mind in prayer. The reason that we do the 12 blessings, and the reason that the 12 blessings are literally so powerful, is um, because it's not just a spiritual practice. It's, ju it's not just this, this me means of making this appeal to this higher f source and sending energy to um, wherever we, we feel it's needed. Main intention, at least in the prayers, is to raise humanity up. And the other aspect of the Twelve Blessings is to, is to raise them up to what? It's to raise them up to a far greater...
concept, literally a cosmic concept of what we are here a part of. And um, again, for those of you who, who <coughs> are unfamiliar with this, of course it was given on 12 consecutive Sundays in 1958. But it was said at the time that they were being given roughly 50 years ahead of their originally intended time, which of course is right around now. And people obviously have, um, as I did myself when I first came across these over 25 years ago, people ob obviously have, and, and, and rightfully have, um, an initial skepticism, a big question mark, about them being given by Jesus. Because to the rational, logical, linear mind, that's not feasible. That doesn't make sense. But through, through practice, through experience, uh, and, and for me, when I came across this, over, as I say, over 25 years ago in the early mid-1980s, I was actually a practicing Christian. I, I, a few years before, I'd read Matthew, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in that reading, discovered, or rediscovered as a child, I was aware of it, but didn't really pay too much heed to it, but you know, I was genuinely looking for answers, didn't know where to look, and I read those four Gospels, and I discovered this individual, Jesus Christ, this great master who, who taught us how we really should be living on earth, which is the main thing, one of the main things that troubled me. And um, so I began going to Orthodox Church, Anglican Church in London, um, for, for several years before I was introduced to the Aetherius Society, where, as I say, they were claiming that Jesus had spoken through this, this man, this yoga master, Dr. George King in 1958. And again, you know, for myself, I was, uh, I think, very logically and reasonably skeptical of that. Um, but when I listened to these blessings, and we will listen to one today, when I listened to these blessings, there was a purity there. and There was a profundity there. There was a, a pure goodness there. A sheer, absolute goodness. And then when I also... Which, because of my Orthodox Christian church, I was on my knees with my hands together doing my praying. Um, you know, praying like that, I felt this tremendous uh, flow of energy, this light. You know, it, it's like, I call it like rods of steel going through my hands. And it was literally physically difficult to lower them. But um, those things combined um, opened me up and, and allowed me, enabled me to realize, apart from another very interesting experience I had, yes, I can accept that these are being given by Jesus. And there's a profound lesson in that, in that in itself, um, for, for the whole human race. Because I think that, I'm sure everybody in this room, you wouldn't be in this room if you didn't, um, but a growing number of people around our world are increasingly concerned about the way our world is going. And it's there's seemingly nothing that can fix it. The economic crisis is too big to fix. Um, the environmental crisis, they're saying, with climate change, is, is too big to correct. The extinction of our species, the overpopulation, if it is overpopulation, um, but certainly the, the fact that we've got millions who starve, a growing number, we've got now you know, this whole shift in climate. Um, we're not a happy world, politically speaking. Just, you know, all these overwhelming crises. And if there is one thing that humanity needs above any other to correct all of these crises, to get them all straightened out, um, well, Dr. King said, that he said, the only real crisis is a spiritual energy crisis. So that's part of it. With enough spiritual energy being invoked and sent out, we would transform the, uh, the way we think, the way we act, the way we behave, the way we see each other, the way we see ourselves, our husbands, our wives, our families, our work colleagues. It will be changed by that inspirational love and light that's in our world. But the other thing, of course, that's going to change it is our philosophical concept of who and what we are and the cosmos within which we exist. And to that extent, the 12 blessings given by a master who has never left us 
Jesus is here in one sense. Um, and another thing that I was questioning as an Orthodox Christian 25 odd years ago is because of my concerns about the world. What, where are the apostles now? What are they doing now? And the more you go into this work, you discover that they're alive. These, as masters, there are masters who are alive. And just because it's conventional wisdom amongst orthodoxy to think of the earth, okay, now we'll accept it's round, she's round. But um, for us to start thinking that, no, she's not just round, she is conscious. She's conscious. She's a living being. As, as Dr. King has told us, this is the holiest being that we've ever touched. And which is what you get out of this teaching by the same Jesus, this living Jesus. And which is the seventh blessing to the Mother Earth. And then the eighth blessing, which talk about mystical experience. If you do this right, mystical experience, which is a blessing to the sun. The sun is not just this hot thing that sort of is, it, it, we're, we're spinning around, sending out light and heat. No, it's a conscious being. Evolve beyond our comprehension to understand, evolve. And I think in another um, companion book, which many of you are familiar with, The, Tw the Nine Freedoms, it talks about existence. It talks about solar existence. Something that orthodoxy isn't there yet. We're moving there. We're getting there with greater speed, thank goodness. It's still a fair way to go. But it's said in the Ninth Freedom about solar existence, we don't really know what love is until we enter the halls of the sun. We, 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 don't, we don't really know what that energy is till we enter the halls of the sun. And so when we do the, the eighth blessing in this upward step, this, this process, um, you can have, and I say this from absolute personal experience, you can have phenomenally deep mystical experience, what can happen to you when you put your focus on the sun. So one aspect of then these blessings, apart from their, their spiritual practice, of invoking energy in a most remarkable, phenomenal, wonderful way is giving humanity a, an awareness, a mental, <clears throat> um, metaphysical, spiritual, tangible awareness of the reality of the cosmos within which we exist, to the extent that it's all living. It's all living on multitudinous levels, but it's all alive. As we've heard in another transmission, there is, as you probably know, there is no such thing as death. And it's all, it's, as you'll, we discover in the Twelfth Blessing, it's all a part of the same oneness. It's all, it's all part of this one thing called God. And as we will look at when we go through these stages, um, because for me it's just so brilliantly described by Jesus, this, this um, hierarchy within which we exist. And when we get to the eleventh blessing, the, the top step, if you like, before the twelfth blessing, it's a blessing to the supreme lords of all creation who brought all of this into manifestation. When I say all of this, this unlimited universe and unknown universes have all been brought into manifestation by these supreme lords of creation as living beings. To most people, this book, I don't need that. Why do I need that? It's just another book. It's got a nice cover, but yeah. To some people, to other people, it attracts their eye. And and they're be curious about it. Yeah, I think I might get that and check that out. Uh, they check it out. And yeah, nice book. Goes on the shelf. Now they've looked at it a little bit. They can see that there's something a little bit special about it, a little bit unusual about it. And then there is a very small minority, as yet, people. Catches their eye, gets their interest, and they take it seriously. 
and they read it and they just realize that this is something very, very unusual. This is rare. And um, they begin to practice it. In other words, like the lamp, they begin to use it. They rub it. And the more you, you, you get to a point where bah, there's a genie in there. There's magic in there. There's, there's, there's awesome power in there. But you have to use it. You have to make it work. You have to make that effort. And man's extremity is God's opportunity. When you, when you make that effort, when you take yourself to make those to that extent, um, profound things happen. And um, you're good, you're set. Um, in terms of making real progress in this life. I'm just going to go through each of the blessings, as I say, and just take a few lines out of these to help us understand who we're talking about, or what we're talking about. And the first of these, as you probably know, is blessed are they who work for peace exactly those who work for peace I agree with you all of these groups all these individuals there are some wonderful human beings working for peace in our world and they're very necessary they're karmically necessary but the ones Jesus is talking about in these times of unrest in your world and they are times of unrest the work for peace are indeed thrice blessed for these ones by their toil sacrifice their own bliss um, so they're sacrificing their own life. This strange world needs the guiding hands of these ones. And they give their hands to the strangers in the wilderness of materialism. It's not limited, rather, to those groups and individuals who you've mentioned. We're including, for sure, masters. Masters uh, on this earth. Uh, in, in, in the sense of ascended master, whoever may come to mind or however you may visualize that. And even as we'll learn through this, masters from beyond this earth. Um, and you can bring, you, you know, Jesus, the Lord Buddha, Swami Vivekananda, Yogananda, Shivananda. This strange world needs the guiding hands of these ones, and they give their hands to the strangers in the wilderness of materialism. They light the beacons in the darkness. They open the oases in the desert. They are the backbone of modern civilization. By joining in with the Twelve Blessings, you help these, and you will be great even though you seek not praise. By doing this practice, we're working for peace. But allow your mind to take this mental elevator to higher realms where there are masters who are sacrificing themselves to bring peace. The second blessing is, blessed are the wise ones, for they walk through a dark and ignorant world spreading their light. So who comes to mind when we think of the wise ones? Who are the wise ones? These are the ones who have gone within, deep within, and made a glorious and lasting contact with the spark which dwelleth there, the self-same spark which came from the heart of the mighty Logos, from the heart of he and it, which fashioned even the Logos. These are unquestionably masters um, I would say of the, of the ascended masters, the spiritual hierarchy of earth, sometimes called the great white brotherhood for its magic. And it's not just male or female, it's both. Um, but this is, these, these are the ones who have gone within, deep within, and made a glorious and lasting contact with the spark which dwelleth there. Um, and it goes on and says, these are great ones without these this world could not endure. These ones are holding a karmic balance on our world. So <clears throat> your mind is going to at least that level of Saint Germain. I mean, you probably know their names as, as much as I do. That individual who has gone within 
and contacted the God spark within them and then come out from that. That's who, and who've walked among us in the world. So that's who we mean by the wise ones, who we are going to put it, be putting our mind onto them. Because again, in a great element of the Twelve Blessings is its wonderful um, enactment of, uh, or clear enactment of the law of karma. Whatever you send out, you will receive. So, you know, when you, you can either sort of get this blurry image of wise ones, uh, but when you are clear in your visualization and your focus of who these wise ones are, and you're sending your energy to them, by the law of karma, that energy will come back to you, actually I would say in an even greater form. And this is where it starts to being a very mystical experience. And with that one there is no prayer, but with the nine others where there is a prayer, you take back what you've sent out, what you've visualized with this purity, this sincerity, this intensity, to that entity, and you pause and then you allow it to come back to you, and imbue you, and take you deep, into yourself with this energy, but then you take that energy in the prayer and you send it out in, as I say, in eight of the nine prayers to uplift mankind. Okay? The third blessing is, blessed are they who love, love for they are Excellent. Blessed are they who love, for they are the disciples of God. They love not any man, because they love all. I think that's a wonderful line from that third blessing, um, in trying to depict them, to understand them. They love not any one single individual. They love all. And this kind of, um, you know, it's, it's difficult in a way to separate the wise ones from they who love, and even from the planetary ones, There's, you know, because they all share, and those who work for peace for that matter, they all share so many of these same qualities and attributes, and it doesn't really matter. These disciples of God, these ones possess naught. They've got nothing for themselves, because they've given it all to their brothers or to mankind. In the words of Father Sector 6, they've killed possession. They've killed the sense of any need for any form of possession. And I know that's difficult for us living in the world. We need elements of possession because of the environment in which we exist. They've taken from their bowed heads their crowns of triumph, their crowns of achievement. So obviously they've experienced and witnessed great triumphs. And they've removed them in sacrifice and cast these in holy sacrifice at the root of the throne of their own salvation. As I say, they love not any man because they love all. These are the ones who will save the pitiful ones, that's us. For these are they who will become the very essence of the heartbeats of the pitiful ones. When we go into the Twelve Blessings with visualization and focus and mental intensity and feeling, we will understand what that means. They will become the essence of the heartbeats of the pitiful ones. You'll feel it. What you've projected out to them, you'll feel it come back. Right into, the, into your very heart. And, and just this eye, third eye, will start opening up. And then you take it, not for yourself. You're giving it in the prayer to raise humanity up. For dear friends, adorable children, first, these are wonderful words, first cometh the angel peace. First cometh the angel peace to make way for the goddess love. When you get into this practice, when you start rubbing this lamp, it, this, this really does become exceptionally powerful. The thing, as I say, is to get this energy out. 
Uh, Dr. King, he describes himself as flying around the room with prayer. He was flying. And you've got to believe that's possible. He was flying because he was, his prayers were so intense with what he was doing. He would, and you know what he says he, when he was flying around the room? What did he do? He kept on praying. He kept on praying. That's all you can do when you, when you are so in it. Uh, that these, the, the, these you know, supposedly unusual, strange things, they're not strange, they're not unusual. This is getting to the very essence of who we are. We're spiritual beings and we're beginning to tap that energy and use that energy that we're here to use and having mystical experience. The fourth blessing. Blessed are the planetary ones um, who have at this time sacrificed peace, sacrificed friendship, sacrificed their very salvation for you. So here we're definitely no longer talking about earth masters because we're told we're talking about interplanetary masters. Masters who have come from other uh, energy frequencies of energy, other, other levels of frequency, obviously. 500 years ago the world was flat, of course it's flat, we'd all fall off. And now we're at a stage in our evolution, well of course there's nothing else can't be any other level of frequency where we could exist, but there are, and soon we'll discover and know that there are, and it will have been ridiculous to ever thought that there wasn't, and they were always there, they're not just going to be there because we've chosen or decided to think that they're there, they've always been there, but these are masters then who've come, of course as Buddha did, as Jesus did, um, well, who, who sacrificed there, that one can only um, imagine the uh, the relationship that must exist between these masters, the depth of love that they f have for each other. In another transmission from the Saturn, from a Lord of Saturn, he, he says these wonderful words, where dwelleth unmodified peace. Can you imagine? I mean, it was hard for us to imagine peace, but let alone unmodified peace. That's their norm. That's their experience, if they have a norm unmodified peace and they've sacrificed that and they sacrifice to say that that friendship that that deep connection that, that exists between them um, that friendship for us and you know we know what we did to Jesus we made the Buddha beg um, but they've come back these are the ones who've left their homes their spiritual homes on these other realms that we can only imagine as best we can who've left their brothers, their spiritual brothers, in order to watch over you. These are the ones who day by day suffer the unspeakable hell of terrible aloneness with these strangers in the wilderness of materialism, in order to give you their hearts. These are the ones who suffer day by day in a thousand psychological ways, so that the dark little earth may make its revolutions through evolution in a thousand psychological ways. I mean, we all know how it troubles us, particularly people like Nikki, to see uh, cruelty to animals. How must they suffer when they see that? In these, uh, the bizarre things that we do, the arguments, the hate, the fight, the, 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 in all its different ways that manifest, how this must trouble them in a thousand psychological ways. Um, they walk unsung in silence. They're not going to be up there trying to win Oscars or be on the front page of People magazine or anything else like that. They shy away from that as much as they can. Um, it's not about celebrity. It's not about wealth. It's not about their personality. They walk unsung in silence through a dark world. They tarry here. They come here. They stay here on this earth. And the light doth come. They bring the light to this world. And then they pass onwards before the takers of that light, which is people like us, do realize what has happened to them. And when you go into the Twelve Blessings, when you do this practice, when you have this mystical experience, you will experience this light they have, that Jesus and, and, and Dr. King, anyway, have placed in our hands. They've gone. They tarried, they've gone.
but before we realize what has happened to us. They take upon themselves terrible karma, awful responsibility, do these ones, and yet they murmur not. It's said that, the, that without the masters being here in, this, in, this, in the uh, spiritual hierarchy of earth, we would already have imploded and destroyed ourselves. They hold this karmic balance, this light, which enables karma to um, prevent us from falling into the abyss. And yet they murmur not. The fifth blessing, blessed are the thanksgivers, for they turn great tides of energy and direct these towards their objectives. Ordinary earth man, that's the vast majority of people in every city and town and village around our world, by and large. Ordinary earth man, by his wrong thought and action, has for countless centuries sent streams of power to the divas, the nature spirits, power discolored by his uncontrolled emotion. The divas, these nature spirits, having no other tools but those of man, have had to make flood and drought. Man is responsible for all these, and all these will be reckoned in his karma. Well, it is being reckoned in our karma. We've got flood, we've got drought, the whole thing's completely out of balance from an environmental point of view. But he says, thrice blessed are they who provide the divas with the spiritual tools so that they may build their empires upon the rock of balance. And that's one thing we do with prayer in the Ethereum Society. Not just when we do our 12 blessing services, but particularly with Operation Prayer Power. When we store this very same energy, um, invoked in a very intense way, and we send it to the divas of hurricanes in particular, or, uh, and floods, to give, um, to give them the tools, spiritual tools, so that they can bring about a balance. So this is, when, um, when I'm doing this prayer um, to the thanksgivers in my visualization, um, and I'm thinking of those who do give thanks to the divas, who labor in a thousand fields and oft times give thanks unto those who protect the fertility of their seeds. I think of indigenous peoples who are, are, are conscious of the interwovenness of life. And um, so that, I tend to think of them because they, they do these things. They do give thanks uh, to nature and to the Mother Earth, um, which certainly Western man, by and large, does not do, by and large. Um, so that's, that's the sort of visualization that I have um, when trying to think of the thanksgivers. The sixth blessing, blessed are they who heal in these days of great pain and suffering. When we do the Twelve Blessings, we are healers. We're healers when we do this. So, But who do we think of when we think of the group soul? Just allow your mind to naturally soar upwards into the realms of the Masters on this earth and beyond this earth, um, who, are, who also are, goes without saying, healers. The more we send it out and the higher we send it out, the more inspiration is going to come back to us. The seventh blessing is when it really does take this cosmic shift with a blessing to the Mother Earth. And, um, you know, when I came across the 12 blessings, I told you in the early 80s, um, I, never, I never thought about the Earth as a living being. And it's only in very recent years that it's become fashionable for churches to start thinking more about the environment. Um, but the traditional teaching was for us to have dominion, you know, over the earth. And um, as we know, that's, it's for us to, um, to grow into this um, greater awareness of the Mother Earth as a conscious being. Blessed is the Logos of this earth, for she shineth like a sun doth shine, yet of purpose she hideth this light beneath the bushel of a material form which renders unto man sustenance. 
She weeps not when the vandals do tear her body with wounds. What do we mean by that? During the Cold War, tearing her body with wounds, if we want to go and test another atom bomb or a hydrogen bomb, we did it without ever asking permission. As, as um, Dr. King says in his lecture, I think, on the cosmic plan, did we ask permission to drop trillions of tons of bombs in the Second World War? Did we get permission from the Earth to do that? Uh, no, we didn't. The fools who commit foul acts against the very nature which forms her fruits. Yet, man, she has borne you. I request most strongly now that you do not take such for granted. She has not as yet demanded that you change or leave. Leave this earth. Another subject. But um, there you go. Blessed is the Mother Earth. And then here we come to this eighth blessing I was talking about. Blessed is the Mighty Son. And it says here, and this is what we need to do in this practice, for the mystical experience. O men of earth, that's you and me, that's us. He uses the word man a lot in the Twelve Blessings. Please, ladies, don't get too hung up about that. Uh, I can understand why, and it's, it's come up several times. It's meant in the sense of humanity, but that was the jargon of the day in the 50s. O men of earth, turn thy face towards the greatest living entity in thy system. So we're going to, using visualization, we're going to visualize the sun. And as much as we can, we're going to bring it into focus in our minds. As a living being, one that shineth always in complete sacrifice upon the behalf of ye, and me, Jesus, and all of us who dwell within its house, all of us who dwell within this solar system, including the perfects of Saturn. But, O men of earth, turn thy face towards the greatest living entity in thy system and absorb its wondrous power deep into thine eye, into your third eye, so that your heart may be burned clean of impurity. And that'll come to you. Your heart is burned. You cannot hold on to negativity or hatred or any of these qualities. Or if you can call them qualities. Whatever they are. Negativities. Um, so that thine eye, your third eye, might dwell upon this glory. And you become very fixed in dwelling upon this glory, this, this being. Not for dwelling's sake purely. Don't dwell on it for dwelling's sake purely, but more for the sake of thy brother who is blind through this part. So when you're doing it, and the more people who are realizing, putting their focus on this greatest uh, living entity in our system, where it's affecting us, which is affecting the mind belt of earth. We're raising up everybody, and you know, walking in here this afternoon, just imagine, just imagine if everyone on earth, and this day will come, walked lightly on the earth, because we were conscious, we were, 24 hours a day we were conscious of the flame within this being, within this goddess, the holiest thing we can touch, how we would treat her so differently. And at the same time, if we were conscious, as we will be, of the sun as this living being. Now, this is the time when we will start living in the truth with a capital L, in the real sense of living. We're not living now. We're existing. We're existing. And this is what this is for, so that we start to live as God intended us to live. And then you go into the ninth blessing. Blessed are the, the supreme lords of karma. If you're doing this right, you know, you're bursting at this point. You know, having gone up to the eighth blessing, and you've been fixed on the sun, and drawn this into your, into your eye, you're so focused at this point. But then, with the ninth blessing, when you think you can't go any further, it says, for these ones, these supreme lords of karma, for these ones, great above words. So now you've gone beyond thought, really. 
So you're getting a whole different sense of intuitive information. Great above words, more holy even than the mighty sun. These beings are more holy even than the mighty sun because now you're going out onto a galactic level. You've broken out of this solar system, which is remarkable enough in itself, and you've gone onto this whole new galactic level of awareness. For these ones, great above words, more holy even than the mighty sun, stretch their influence throughout all the galaxy, so that the great laws of God, the great laws which are God, may be perfect in their balance. So these are the ones who account for every action or reaction that's taking place throughout our whole galaxy. In their goodness, in their justice, in their perfection, the balance. So holy, so sacred are these mighty beings that common man, that's us, may not even know their names. So sacred, so great are these mighty beings that even the perfects of Saturn whisper their names but gently with a heart full of fashioned respect. Men, you will never repay the debt you owe to these ones. In this process, we're opening ourselves up to these ones. Perhaps for the first time, you know, Dr. King in his lecture on man's mind, he talks about um, the mind being like a pin cushion. And the first time we have these thoughts, it's like the first time we push a pin into that cushion. And it's, you've got to push. You've got to push to get it in. But then the second time you push it in, it's a little bit easier. Until it's found its, its way through and it's, you can push it in easily. And it's the same with these blessings. To, to, the more we do them, the easier it becomes to elevate ourselves to this level. There's no prayer at the end of that. Master Jesus says this, Be good, be tolerant, be kind, be merciful, be gentle, be humble, and you will be great. Then you will be helping the sacred ones whose names may not be mentioned even in closed session. But he says this, Bless your brothers. Bless the logos of your earth, which we've done. Bless the mighty solar Logos, which we've done. And then bless the supreme lords of karma, and you will discover a satisfaction beyond all words. And you will know how true those words are when you do that. A satisfaction beyond all words. And you won't want to move. You just want to stay there. You've got to go into the tenth blessing, which is a blessing to the great being known as the galaxy. I'm going to read what Jesus said after they'd given the prayer, because this is cutting right through the whole matter. He says, this is prayer. Prayer beyond the mere babbling of foolish man for possession. For this prayer can only come from the very heart, from the very soul, from the very center of your spirit. And you know when you're doing this that what he's saying is, is precise. Let your prayer flow in the wondrous unchanged light that it is to the source of this great being. And I say unto you, this is where you start realizing that Jesus ain't dead and Jesus ain't gone nowhere. I say unto you, no matter what your religion or belief, this will be the greatest part of it. This will be the greatest prayer you can offer up to now. You can only experience it for yourselves. And when you do experience that, as I say, you, um, you know, you're really, really coming into yourself. You're coming into who you are. And, and why you're here, and, and what your role is in here. You know, Master Dr. King said, another wonderful thing he said, he said, you'll die in ignorance. If you don't do that, he said, you'll die in ignorance. And that's a terrible thing to do, to die in ignorance. And when you, if, if you use this in the way that it's intended to be used, you will not die in ignorance. 
You will not die in ignorance. But then the more that you do it, you will become great. But you're not seeking greatness. But what you're doing is that you are, you are t turning this great wheel. You're getting this great wheel of spiritual energy to start moving and spinning faster. And you'll be introducing these concepts into the whole mind belt of the world and bringing about the only kind of change, that it, the only change that can change and unite, bring together this family of terrestrials, this family of man. It's a wonderful way to do it. The eleventh blessing to the supreme lords of creation. These are the gods of the gods, okay? These are the gods of who we've just been looking at. These are the gods of the suns. These are the gods of the solar systems. These are the gods of the supreme lords of karma. These are the gods of the galaxies. These are their gods, okay? We don't have the mental capacity to get there, but they do. And these are their gods, these supreme lords of all creation. These dwell in the highest places in all the vast universal system. These are sacred beyond description. They can't be described how sacred they are. They are the shining ones. They are the givers of light. They are the spirits of flame. Whatever that may mean. They are the great and mighty energies which course through each galactic system. Now if you've taken those steps one by one, with focus, concentration, visualization, uh, mental intensity, and feeling, you'll be up there. You'll be understanding what's being said and, and, and meant here by Jesus. Um, then you do a wonderful prayer. It's a wonderful prayer at the end of the 11th blessing. And then, of course, you got the 12th blessing. And um, I always say this um, because, to me, it, it sums it up. I mean, it, you've probably got here the best description you'll find in any religious, metaphysical, spiritual text to describe the Absolute, um, which cannot really be described, it's beyond description. But um, Jesus says, Blessed is the Absolute, not even the supreme lords of all creation. These are the gods of the gods. Not even the supreme lords of all creation can do justice to the picturization of the magnificence of God. Blessed are they who love, for they are the disciples of God. O mighty God, who is the creator of all things, we pray that your light may shine through us all, so that we may transmit this unto the world.